What's up everybody, Jason from Jason's Exotic Reptiles. Today we're going to talk about a pretty controversial topic, so I want everybody to adjust their panties so they don't bunch up in this one. It's, uh, this is going to be a controversial topic, and I'm sure this is going to be shared with some hate, but hopefully it's going to be shared in a positive light. So let's dive right into it. We're going to be talking about boa constrictor subspecies bloodlines and locales, whatever you want to call them, basically I'm taking a pure animal and I'm going to mix it with a non-pure animal or an impure animal. And that generally is frowned upon across the entire boa community and oftentimes you'll see it in other snake communities like carpet pythons, things like that where they want to keep pure species pure and then keep the mutts the mutts. Well in this video I'm going to talk about making mutts by taking a pure animal and mixing it with something else. And uh, what I want to get into with this is the reasons for doing it, the reasons why at least I personally feel that it could be good, and the reasons why I personally would avoid it. So these are kind of my viewpoints on it. I'm not going to really get into others and how others feel. I'll touch a little bit on it, but let's get right into my thoughts on it. So personally, and just so everybody knows, this is a Peruvian boa constrictor, a BCC from Peru. You can see a nice true red tail here. And uh, I wanted to use this guy as an example because I think if you're breeding for a purpose in anything that we do, any, any snakes that we breed, if we breed it for a purpose and we're trying to get a predictable result, uh, trying to enhance the colors, enhance the patterns on something, then I personally don't have a problem with what I'll call for the purposes of this video integrades. Uh, I'm taking this boa that has a really pretty red tail and I want to bring the reds out in something else. So this could apply and I've done this personally on things like taking an albino and putting it with the surname, making some head albinos and then breeding those babies back again to make some really pretty uh, albino boas with super red tails and super red saddles. So in that sense we're breeding for a purpose. Taking an IMG boa and breeding it to an, uh, an, uh, an Argentine or a, or a boa constrictor longicata, BCL. Both of those have naturally increased melanin. So I don't know if you guys have noticed, but over the years, the initial IMGs that came out were nice. Those boas were almost all black. Now you were starting to see some adults that just have some black freckles on them. To me, that's not an exciting IMG. I want an IMG that's going to excite me. I want something that, that is going to turn black. So by integrating it into an Argentine boa who's already naturally got that darker pigments to it, then I think that can make sense. Now I wouldn't go and put an IMG to a, a Pearl Island boa or a Hog Island boa because I think personally it wouldn't really enhance the gene. I f see that as more of I need a snake to fill my, my breeding year. I have this male and this female. Let's put them together. Me personally, I would only integrate species or subspecies or locales, whatever we're calling them now, I would only integrate those if there was a purpose behind it. Now, on that other hand, so there's some species out there like, let's say a jungle. I may want to mix a pearl island with a jungle because that's going to enhance the jungle pattern. It's going to really clean up the snake, bring out that natural hypomelanism that we're going to see in the pearl islands. And I think those babies would be pretty cool. Same thing with like a BCL and an Argentine cross, so a, like a, a Peruvian long tail and an Argentine cross. You have two species that have increased melanin in them already. I think the integrated that boa would be pretty amazing just to look, just to see what it would look like. So I think for those purposes, it does make sense. And if we think some of the original sharp boas, they had, you know, the Peter Sharp, uh, sorry, the uh, Brian Sharp albino line, these were, those were originally mixed with Cernim. So if you have a sharp boa, this was already done. So everybody's praising some of these boa breeders for, oh, this guy keeps things pure. They do not keep things pure. On the most part, they'll generally keep things pure. But if you're doing things for a purpose, like enhancing the red, uh, I see nothing wrong with it personally. Now, reasons again why I wouldn't do it is if it's just filling a breeding year. Um, I would never take this Peruvian, I would never take my Peruvian female and just breed it to some random male because it's so difficult to get these pure bloodlines, these pure localities. So this is the other side of the argument is it's so difficult to find pure lines now. Why would we make any integrades when we don't have enough pures? I agree with that point. If I have a male and a female and they're ready to go, perfect. Now, if I were to make an integrade or if I were to make this hybrid boa species, I would probably only do it if I had a surplus male. I would use, I would never take my pure Peruvian boa female or my Argentine females or any pure lines of any females and breed them 
to just some random boa with no purpose. And even when I'm doing things for a purpose, I would still prefer to use the normal, more readily available female and breed it to the male. For the reason being is generally females are gonna have more complications in the breeding. The last thing I would wanna do is try to be playing around with something. Uh, you know, I keep these pure lines because I enjoy them, but to be playing around with something, and then as a result, my female dies in the process of laying babies. She ovulates and, and gets some micro tears or something goes wrong, it just puts too much of a toll on her body and something happens to her. So in that case, I would never wanna risk the female the male is a little bit more versatile where he doesn't really do much after breeding. He breeds and then he's done. He's back to his enclosure, he's eating again, everything's going fine. So it's a lot less risky for a male. Um, so I, I'm sure if some of you guys follow my Facebook, you'll see that years ago, I bred an Argentine to a hypo. Uh, that wasn't necessarily for a purpose. I'm kind of going on what I, did, what I didn't want to do. I just personally wanted to see what an Argentine and a hypo boa would look like, a hypo-argentine that had kind of 50%, 50%, um, and I've done that with the surnames before. I made sharp albino surnames, and i got to say, these things were absolutely amazing. So they were 50% sharp, 50% uh, Colombian, we'll call it for lack, 50% mutt. So they could have actually been higher, higher percent, I'm sorry, 50% surname, 50% whatever that other mutt is, because the original sharp lines already had surname in them, it was probably higher than 50% surname. One, they looked better than the albino cernum that's floating around right now. And two, they were absolutely fantastic looking. Uh, unfortunately, I got in a bad batch of feeders and literally 50 of my snakes died all at once overnight. So that's a whole different topic for a video, but be careful who you get your feeders from. So with that said, I think that it is important to breed with a purpose. I think if you are trying to enhance a color, enhance a bloodline, again, BCCs, I don't know if I would do that with the Peruvian because they're so hard to get. Uh, but maybe I would do it with a surname, uh, something that wouldn't really completely just degrade what I'm trying to make. And I think that's the purpose. I mean, that's what we're, we're all shooting for. Now, I do see hybrids. Now, hybrids, in my opinion, I don't hate them. I don't love them. I wouldn't personally buy one. If somebody gave me one, I'd take it and be like, this is a cool animal. But I personally wouldn't try to make it. One, the reason in is that you ha generally have a low success rate. And when I talk hybrid, I'm talking like a boa to an anaconda, a ball python to a Burmese python. I think they're super cool snakes, and I personally would like to see more of them out there, but at the same time, I would rather look in my cage and look in my enclosure and see a pile of babies, and that to me is exciting. That's what keeps me breeding. Um, the amount of n unsuccessful attempts you would have to make to get the Burmese ball python hybrid or the boa constrictor and the anaconda hybrid, uh, you probably never make it. And the people who do make it are very lucky. It was like this one or two time spinoff. It's generally not reproducible uh, unless you have a lot of animals and you're breeding a lot of them. But for the most part, you're going to result in animals that are going to give you stillborns or slugs or, or bad eggs, depending on what you're breeding. So for those reasons, I don't personally like hybrids and integrades, but I do enjoy looking at them. Uh, the other thing is the offspring. You can only do so much with the offspring. It's not like I can take these hybrids and I can start breeding them like crazy. There's certainly exceptions. The carpet, uh, what do they call them? Carpondros, the, ca the carpet green tree pythons. The, uh, I don't know what they call the berm balls. Berm balls, Burmese python ball pythons. Uh, different types of, and I don't know what they call the anaconda one. But uh, I know you can do that with the bat eaters and I think the cat eaters and stuff like that. You can still breed them out, um, but uh, generally they're not going to be a strong breeder. Now if I were to make a hybrid, um, let's say I wanted to make a Burmese python ball python, I would want to probably start with absolutely normal animals. You don't want to start with animals that are already filled with morphs because let's be real, every time we add a morph, it's technically a genetic screw up in the snake. Now, some of them have minimal effects, some of them have more serious effects, like a spider ball python on the wobble, or a jaguar and, and carpet python, or jaguar retic and the wobbles, the scorias have the wobbles. I don't want to start with an animal that already kind of has some flaws in it genetically. It might be a perfect animal, it might eat. Uh, breed, drink, everything perfectly, shed perfectly, but from that same standpoint, it is a weaker genetic system, in my opinion. I don't have anything to back this up on other than I wouldn't want to take a defect and start breeding it into something else because who knows what else that is going to couple with. And it's been proven many times that defective things, sometimes they get to this point where it just becomes fatal. You might get babies and it, it just fails to thrive. Think super motley. Um, 
Motley itself is an awesome snake. You make a super, there's just too much going on in that snake, and even though it lives for a short period, it's probably going to die eventually. So, I'm rambling on like this, but, uh, you know, again, I hope you guys kind of are getting the process of what I'm doing here in terms of the hybrids. Um, again, hybrids, I would take just super normal animals. If I were going to do a burn ball, I would take a, a, a small... Uh, female or I might take a, a, a large female ball python and a small male Burmese python try to go that way so I don't know if this helps you guys at all but that's kind of my take on hybrids um, I know that I'm gonna get people in the comment section that are gonna be like hybrids are just they're the death to the industry and you're you're just terrible for breeding this stuff but I breed what I like I do this because I enjoy it so hopefully you guys enjoyed this video I'm gonna wrap it up here I uh, hope I didn't ramble on too long, but thank you guys again. Please hit the like button, subscribe, comment, share. Let's keep growing the channel, and uh, we'll catch you next week. Thanks, guys.